Hey, we're going to get started in a couple minutes if everybody wants to get their seats and uh, keep an eye on the announcement screen there. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Warsaw Baptist Church. My name is Ken. I'm one of the pastors here. Glad to see you all here in the building. If you're watching from home, uh, please go ahead and like and share this video so that other people can see it as well. Um, if you're watching this later on on YouTube, you can just share the link with uh, people as, they, uh, as they're able. Um, we have a few announcements before we get started. Um, first one is Thanksgiving meals. So we're two weeks away, right? Less than two weeks away. Yeah, yeah. so um, we've got sign-up sheets out there in the foyer. If you haven't been here for Thanksgivings in the past, uh, we sponsor this year 12 families, and uh, what we're doing is we, uh, we, we you all cook a turkey, um, and then we also provide all the sides still in their containers, so boxes of potatoes, cans of yams, and that sort of thing. Um, so we need everybody to fill out those 12, uh, sh those sheets for the 12 items. I know our small group is doing one, um, but uh, if you are able to cook a turkey, even if you can't buy the turkey, let us, let Lori know, Lori's right over here, um, we need to get that, we're a week and a half away, I think, so. Yeah, we still need a lot more turkeys. Yeah, so we still need a lot more turkeys, so. All dad jokes aside, so, uh, so, so uh, we're going to uh, get that done tomorrow morning at about 10.30. Now, I say about 10.30 because the food truck has come at various times <laughs> uh, in the last few months, uh, but if you are not at work or at school and you have a strong back and are willing to work, um, we could definitely use your help unpacking the uh, delivery of the food for the food pantry, restocking the shelves. Um, if you have any questions about that, see Miss Lucille. She's raising her hand right now. There she is. All right. Uh, she'll tell you all you need to know about that. Um, we have a couple other announcements. I'll have um, Jenny come up first. Jenny's got a... I don't think you could hear the sigh with the microphone, so... I'll give you a mic so they can hear you at home, too. Um, I just wanted to come up and tell you all that um, the Gallatin County Tourism is doing their Christmas program this year, December 11th. And um, in the past, we've tried to participate. Um, and of course, we couldn't last year because of COVID. And I thought it would be kind of fun this year if we did a live nativity because they're doing a light up. It's called Bring on the Lights. Um, and it is December 11th from 5 to 8. So I thought it'd be kind of fun if we did a live nativity. So if you're interested in participating, see, I hate coming up here. If you're interested in participating, um, please see me and um, we'll sign up so that way everybody doesn't have to stay in for a long period of time in the cold. They are also having a Christmas parade and they're looking for floats. 
Um, and if anyone is interested in heading that up, I think it'd be kind of cool to have um, a float in the parade as well. So um, if you're interested in doing any, any of that, please see me um, anytime or send me a message. Thanks. All right, thank you. Um, and uh, we, uh, if you didn't hear that, if you just walked in, uh, we do have a Christmas parade coming up that if you are interested in heading up the float project, uh, see Jenny. And if you want to help with the live nativity, see Jenny. Uh, we want to get that. What was the date again? I'm sorry. December 11th. December 11th. So that's the second Saturday? Sec second Saturday of the month. Um, now we also have Mary Beth who's going to come up and tell you about the OCC shoe boxes. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. So um, today is our packing party, and most of you all know plenty about OCC and the shoe boxes because Norma and I constantly tell you about it. Um, but today is our packing party. We're hoping to pack at least 100 boxes. We had um, the Hoppers and Kids come yesterday, and they helped us with some of the behind the scenes stuff of getting everything ready, and then they packed their own as well. Um, we have a couple boxes up here. We'll have more empty ones. You can pack your own as an individual or as a family. So if you would like to do that, you have this week because we're not taking them until Monday, next Monday. Um, I wanna read something. This is on the OCC Northern Kentucky um, Facebook page. So if you're on Facebook and you wanna learn more about OCC, that this one is our Northern Kentucky. You can also, of course, look on just Operation Christmas Child Facebook. Um, but this was a story from 2015, and it says, my name's Ted, and I live in Minnesota. I was an orphan in the former Soviet Union when I received my shoebox. We had to share everything at the orphanage, including towels. When I got a washcloth in my shoebox, I actually thought it was my own personal towel. It was very special because I was the only one who could use it. It was my own personal thing, something that I didn't have before. Another favorite item was a notebook. It was awesome because when I was moved to a different orphanage, I could use it to write letters to my sisters and stay in touch with them. God used that shoebox to plant a seed at a time when I was looking for hope and something to believe in. It opened my heart to understanding that there must be a loving God. I'd never felt so much hope in my life knowing that there was someone who loved me. God uses these simple tools in a mighty way, so pack a shoebox. So what we do is not just pack school supplies and soap and a toothbrush and all this stuff to go to kids in other countries. We pack these because with every box also goes the gospel. And that is the gift that we want to give them. So it's not just about giving them a Christmas gift. It's about giving them the gift of the gospel. So if you have any questions about what can go in a box, what can't go in a box, let us know. I've got pamphlets that can go with these to let you, um, to kind of guide you in packing your own if you're not sure. We just can't send anything liquid, no toothpaste, no candy. Um, everything has to be... Um, nothing that has an expiration date or anything that can leak or break. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I have control issues. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so, also, we are having pizza and um, after church before we pack our shoe boxes. We are actually going to just have you grab a piece of pizza out of the children's church room. Um, Jenny, I've already put soft drinks and a cooler in there, so don't let the kids get into that. Um, so we will be doing that right after church. So if you all could give us a show of hands, and Lorma and Lori help, help count, of who is staying, because I haven't ordered the pizza yet, and that way I kind of know how much. Who all staying for the packing party today? That's it? Okay, I get lots of pizza. So, <laughs> all right, okay, so if, um, if you are staying, we'll do pizza and then pack our boxes. So, thank you.
All right, let me see hands again. Who's showing up for the packing party? Hands again. All right. Let's see some more hands. There we go. All right. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're going to have uh, a good time with that. Um, tonight, um, the other church that meets here, Gallatin Community Church, they have a special guest speaker um, that will be speaking tonight at 6 p.m. His name is Terrence Talley. Um, so if you, uh, if you were at the school, I think, did he speak Friday or is he speaking Monday? He's also speaking at the school, apparently. But, uh, but yeah, so he'll be here tonight at 6 and, uh, and if anybody wants to, to see him, everybody's invited. Um, before we get started with our uh, time in worship, let me read this passage from Isaiah 41. In uh, chapter 41, verse 9 and 10, it says, You are my servant. I have chosen you and not cast you off. Fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. We are about to uh, join together in a time of worship, and this is who we're worshiping. We're worshiping the God who is with us, who holds us up, who uh, strengthens us, and who is always for us. If you, uh, if you don't know that God, we pray that today uh, you would encounter him. Uh, in our time of worship, in our singing, and the preaching and hearing, hearing of God's word. Uh, but all of us who are Christians, I encourage you to uh, stand up and sing out to this God who, who is so good to us. Amen? All right, let's, let's sing. Before we get started, I just want to congratulate Thomas and Abby Bell, their birth of their brand new baby boy. Woo! If you'll stand with us, we'll get started.
Today is the second Sunday, so we do have children's church and nursery. Um, we'll uh, pray for those kids and the workers, and then we'll get started. Father God, we are so thankful for the children in this room. We are so thankful for the volunteers who, who make it possible to uh, attend to them in the nursery and to teach them in the children's church classroom. Lord, I pray that you would bless everyone who is a part of that ministry. I pray that you would bless these children as they are uh, loved and served uh, by our volunteers. 
And Lord, as the children are returned back to their homes, I pray that you would help us to see our role, our, our task that you've given us to steward these young hearts and young minds toward you. Lord, help us to raise them in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Help us to raise them in the way they should go. And Lord, help them to, to, to just be small little lights in this dark world for you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said, amen. All right. Everybody else, go ahead and open up your Bibles to Psalm 116. Psalm 116 should be around the middle of your Bible. Uh, if you're in the Pew Bibles, one of these hardback blue ones, it'll be on page 510 and 511. And just a, a forewarning, I, uh, I've been trading some sort of gunk sickness with my two lovely small children, and uh, this may be a very short sermon. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so we're going to jump in, and uh, when you get to Psalm 116, if you could stand for the reading of God's word, I'd appreciate that. We stand to show reverence to the Lord who gave us this word, and to just push away the distractions that we might have come in here with. Psalm 116, starting in verse 1, says, I love the Lord. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O oh my soul, to your rest. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed even when I spoke, I am greatly afflicted. And when I said in my alarm, all mankind are liars. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people in the courts of the house of the Lord. In your midst, O oh Jerusalem, praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Let's pray. I love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. If nothing else is accomplished today, Lord, help us to just grow in our love for you. Grow in our commitment to you. Grow in our adoration of you. Grow in our trust. For your ways. Lord, you could have ignored us when we called for help. You could have thrown all of our sin in our face when we asked for forgiveness. And instead, you, you gave your son to us. Father, you gave Jesus. psalm says that precious in your sight is the death of the saints. You show just how valuable our lives are when you
you gave your son to die to pay the price to save us. How can we do anything but love you, Lord? How can we do anything but thank you, God? Lord, help us to just embrace the beauty of who you are and what you have done, what you're continuing to do and what you have promised to do in the future. And help us as as those who love you to, to then show others why you are worthy of love and worship and praise. I pray all these things in Jesus' precious name and all God's people said, amen. In today's passage, in this psalm, we find ourselves in the middle of what we call the Egyptian Hillel Psalms. If you haven't been with us, I'll just summarize what those are. Um, Psalm 113 through 118 are these psalms that were traditionally read during the Passover celebration. And um, we saw in the, the first week that we were in these psalms in 113 that uh, in Matthew 26, it says that before Jesus went to the, ga- the, the Garden of Gethsemane, I'm sorry, he sang a hymn. And what we believe, what scholars believe is since they were just finished celebrating the Passover at that Last Supper, he would have been singing these psalms. And so when we read these, we should read them in the historical context of the psalmist writing, remembering what God did as, as, as the people were rescued out of the bondage of slavery in Egypt. But also we should look to Christ. We should look to Christ and, and, and find joy and find peace and find a reason to love God because our Lord knew what he was walking into when he sang these when he sang these words, when he sang words like I am greatly afflicted in verse 10 and all mankind are liars, he knew that his closest disciples were going to turn on him. One would betray him, the others would scatter. Even the one who said, no matter if everybody else runs away, I will stand right by you. Jesus knew as he sang this psalm that night that Peter wouldn't hold true to his word. Jesus sang this psalm that night knowing that we wouldn't always hold true to ours. As we, as we look at this psalm, look again at verse 1. It says, I love the Lord. Do you love the Lord? Do you love the Lord? I ask that question because I've had the conversation multiple times this week with people about this psalm, and to a person, they've said something like, yes, but not like I should. I I love him, but... It's fickle. I love him, but sometimes everything else pushes him totally out of my sight. I love the Lord. If you don't know, I love Monica. I say it with my words to her embarrassment, I'm sure. When she sings that last song, I'm just like, But wouldn't it be weird if all I had for her was words? Wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be odd? Wouldn't it be sad if all I did was tell her I love her and never show her I love her? If you're here and you're like me and you're like the several Christians that I talked to this week who say, I love the Lord, but sometimes you wouldn't know it by my life then I, I want this to be an encouraging psalm for you. The psalmist doesn't scold you for not being lovely. 
and loving to God. He doesn't scold you for your fickle care for your Savior. He just, he just starts rehearsing to himself and then to God and then to us as we read it. He starts rehearsing why he loves God and invites us into that same thing. Because honestly, you might have come here today and you might have had so many other things pressing in on you this week that you just think, I can't generate the love. I, I can't just make it happen. So the psalmist says, let me remind you of what God's like. Let me remind you of how much he loves you. And then just reflect that back. Amen? Why should we love God? Verse 12 has kind of a junk drawer term. It says, What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? Now this psalm doesn't unpack all of the psalmist's benefits that he gets from God, but he mentions a few. He mentions specifically a time when he was in such distress that he thought he would die. Some of you have been in that situation, right? Some of you have been in that situation where you thought, if God doesn't do something, my life is over. Or if God doesn't do something, my relationship with this other person is over. If God doesn't do something, there is no hope. And so he starts to list these benefits. In verses 1 and 2, it starts with what he has done. He says, I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The first thing he rejoices about, the first reason that he gives for loving God is the fact that God hears him. This is before he talks about anything God did for him. He just... He just celebrates the fact that God hears him. That God inclines his ear. It's almost like God is stooping down out of heaven right into his life, into his personal anguish and crisis. And he hears the plea. Listen, if you're here, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've had done to you, no matter what you've brought into this room with you, God will hear you if you call out to him. If you need salvation, he will hear you. If you need help, he will hear you. If you need to, to, to overcome sin, he will hear you. He will incline your, his ear to you because he loves you. You can then love him. Amen? Verses 5 and 8, it again talks about what he has done. Gracious is the Lord and righteous our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, this is past tense, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death. Now he's talking directly to God. You have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. He celebrates. He says, God, I love you because you, you did what I asked you to do. You saved me. And this is not talking about just some once and done thing. This is, this is, you have saved me and you will continue to save me. You have delivered my soul from death and verse 9, I will walk before the Lord. You have saved me and you will keep me safe. That's good news. I can't promise that to you or even to Monica or to my kids. I can't promise you that I will keep you safe. But God promises Jesus says, if you are his, no one can snatch you out of his hand. No one. You can't, you can't snatch yourself out of his hand. 
This is good news for a lot of us. Because many of us have confessed Jesus as Lord. We have submitted to him as Lord. We have said, you are my Savior. I trust in you. And then we have gone and slid back into sin. Now, to be backslidden is not to to say, well, I'm a sinner, so God has to love me. To be backslidden as a Christian in the Bible, it is is to say, oh, God, who's going to save me from this body of death? I keep doing what I don't want to do. I don't do what I know I should do. Help me, God. I have slidden back. And, And he promises call out to him, he's there. He promises. He's he's that close to us. We see this again in verse 16. Oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. We talk about it a lot here. I, I love to quote Paul in Galatians where he says, it is for freedom that Christ set you free. He has loosed your bonds. You know, Paul then goes on to say, so don't then go back to the yoke of slavery. He's loosed those bonds. Don't go back and put them back on. Instead, love and thank the Lord for what he's done. But also love him for what he is doing. Look at this in verse 6. He preserves the simple. He's talking about himself. He's talking about me. He's talking about you. If you're here, hearing my voice, you are what God would consider simple. You might tell everybody else about your problems, and you might make it sound so complicated, but he says, it's really simple. Sin, when you hear and out there has broken a lot of things. But I will preserve you through it until all the broken things are untrue. See, this is, this is great news to me. I don't have to persevere so much as I just have to be preserved. If I have to persevere, that means I have to work really hard to stay right And I can't. I've talked to enough of you to know you can't. But I don't have to persevere. I just have to let him preserve me. Amen? Any of you can vegetables? The green beans don't do anything, right? Right? The process, it's hot. There's some things that get broken. But the beans don't do anything. You you aren't responsible to do the stuff. You're responsible to just be preserved by God. But then also look at what he will do. Verses 15 through 19, it says this, Precious. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in the midst, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Now, Some of these lines are actually repeated from earlier, but in this last section, it comes right after this talk of the death of his saints. Now, I just talked about how God is going to preserve us. I just talked about how God is going to save us if we will just call out to him, that he leans in and he hears us and he does what we beg him to do. But then it talks about us dying as saints. See, this psalm points us not just to God with us in this life. This psalm points us to the life to come. 
This psalm points us to the resurrection. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. He loved you so much. He, the precious, this is value that he's talking about. You are so valuable that he sent his son to die for you, to give his life for you. And when he rose, that was a guarantee that you will rise as well. If you love him, if you have trusted him for your salvation, you will rise into everlasting life. And so when he talks in this next little section about giving thanksgiving, a sacrifice of thanksgiving and calling on the name of the Lord and paying his vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, he's not talking about this. He's talking about when we will do that in heaven. See, he mentions it earlier. He uses the same words. I will lift up the cup of my salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of his people. That is talking about this. Gathering with God's people here on this earth. But after the death of his saints, we still have a better worship service to go to. Amen? We have a better cup to raise up. It won't be a cup of remembrance that we celebrate here once a month. It will be the cup of the choice wine at the banquet supper of the Lamb. Amen? And we will be there with the saints. We will be there in the presence of all his people. That means all of those loved ones that we have that have gone on, whether they did so at a young age or an old age, all those people that we love that we used to have in this room, will be sitting beside us raising that cup. Russell Bickers, raising that cup, telling me I should cheer. <laughs> Jenny Caldwell, raising that cup. I can't wait for that day. I get goosebumps. I get, I like, you can't see it. I got a coat on. I get goosebumps. I think about it. What a glorious day that's going to be. Don't you love the Lord for promises like this? Oh, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Now look how his love shows itself. So, so love that is, that is just words is, is one thing, but, but he takes his words and goes into action. Um, if you remember in Psalm 107, 2, we said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, right? So he... Because he loves God, because he trusts God, because he knows that God is for him, he, he goes to God. One of the ways I know my children love me is because when they're in trouble, they run to me. Sometimes when they know that they're in trouble with me, they run to me. I think that can definitely be read into this passage. He heard my Voice, my pleas for mercy. Why do you need mercy? Because you're a sinner. Because you've sinned against the Father. And yet, who does he cry out to? He cries out to the Father because he loves the Father. He trusts the Father. He's for him. He cries out in his distress. He says, I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I call on him as long as I live. He says, the snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold of me. I suffered distress and anguish. So what did he do? He called. He opened his mouth. He, he was the redeemed. So he said so. He says, oh, Lord, pray, deliver my soul. Did you talk to God in your distress? Did you know that that's one of the ways that you can show him love? A lot of times, honestly, when I'm in distress, my first reaction is to talk to myself about how to fix the problem. Anybody else? A lot of times, I'll run to some other people and say, how do I fix this? He says, as a loving father, just, just run to me. Let me be your first phone call. Amen? Amen. He knows the end from the beginning. He is not perplexed by what's going on. He, he's got you. Hold on to him. Call out 
to him. But then he also uses his words for praise, not just to call out in distress, but again in verses 1 and 2 we saw it. I love the Lord. That's praise. My voice was crying out for mercy, but he inclined his ear to me, and so I will call on him as long as I live. That means I will call on him for help again next time, but also I will just call on him and say, you're awesome. I love you. I can't believe I get to be in relationship with you. You ever had one of those relationships on a human level? You're like, if they knew who I was, they would not want to hang out. Like I joke with most of the men in this room, you married up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Todd. Yeah. Yes, Logan. We married up. Right, Terry? We married up. Sean? We married up. See, all of you men would get more points if you said amen really loud. <laughs> nice little loud. But honestly, I've, I've had those relationships. I've, I've looked at Monica and said, why in the world do I get to have her as a wife? Now, she's not perfect. <laughs> I'm not, you know, glorifying her up here. God forbid. <laughs> dangerous for her, dangerous for me, it's dangerous for y'all. But I do, I thank God. I'm like, I can't imagine... What in the world she was thinking to love me? How much more should we feel that about God who, who knows everything that you've ever done? The God of the universe who has seen every dark thought, has heard every careless word, has witnessed every action and reaction that, that, that is just a fist thrown in his face. And yet he loves you. What else should we do but praise him? He worships in verses 12 through 14. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? In other words, I can't pay him back. Instead, I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. See, here he's, he's thanking God, but then he's inviting us to join in. I love him. You should love him. Let's all love the Lord. He says, I, 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 I long for these times when I can be in the presence of his people so that I can give him glory. And you see it repeated again in verses 16 through 19 says, O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, your maid, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bond, so I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again is the word hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Psalm 113, we, we praise the Lord for his wondrous works. In Psalm 114, we, we praised him with a trembling heart, a reverence for his majesty and his might and his glory. In Psalm 115, we praised him because of his trustworthiness. And in this psalm, we just, we just look and we say, we praise you for your love for me. And that praise turns back into love for you. See, we're not wondrous to God. He doesn't look down to us and say, oh, I never saw something like that. We're not a cause for him to tremble. And we're not trustworthy. So we can't give back anything that we've given, that, that we've gotten in these other psalms. But in this psalm, this psalm is about the love that he showered on us. And that is what we can give back to him. It's the one thing that you can give back to him. Praise and worship 
your Lord and your King with a heart of love. Now, Jesus makes it clear. He doesn't want praise if it's just words. He wants your heart to overflow with love. Amen? This is what Christ wants. He says, if you truly love me, in John 14, he says, if you truly love me, you will keep my commandments. Now, all of us can say, I love you, but I didn't keep all your commandments yesterday. So what do we do? We go back to him. In fact, we just let him come back to us. You know, Peter didn't run back to Jesus after he denied him three times. When he let him go to the cross. It says Peter, he ran away. And at the end of the Gospel of John in chapter 21, Jesus goes back to Peter. Do you know what he asked him? He asked him, do you love me? Three times he asked him, do you love me? Now imagine you have betrayed somebody you love here on earth. Imagine they come back to you and they ask you, do you love me? And you say, yes, yes. And then they ask you again, do you love me? Yes. They ask you a third time. It's, you don't know where your relationship is, right? Jesus asked him three times, I think, because Peter denied him three times. He was rebuilding everything that Peter had torn down. And then he didn't say, okay, we'll jump through all these hoops. Do you know what he said to do? Take care of his sheep. If you love me, feed my sheep. Do you love Jesus? Do you? If so, go and feed his sheep. We have ministries like the food pantry and like OCC. Because there are people out there who are still hungry to hear that God loves them. Let's go feed the sheep. I love you, Dad. Let's pray. Father God. Father, we love you. We, we thank you so much for your love to us. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you so much for your love. Holy Spirit, we thank you not only for your love for us, but also for giving us eyes to see the beauty and the loveliness of our God. Holy Spirit, before you opened our blind eyes, before you revived our dead hearts, we could not see God as lovely. But because you have done that, we can't see anything else. Lord, forgive us for the myriads of times when we have not shown a love and a dedication and a heart for you. Holy Spirit, help us to not only show love to our God, to our Father and to our Lord Jesus Christ. But help us to be lights of love in a dark, in an unloving world. As some of us go back to work tomorrow, as some go back to school, as some go back to raising little babies, it'll be so easy to get frustrated. It'll be so easy to just go along with all the all the rancor and the, and the anger of this world. Instead, Lord, help us to be peacemakers. Lord, I pray all these things in Jesus' perfect and precious name and all God's people said, amen.
All right. I love you guys. Go be the church. If you're helping with the shoebox ministry, see Mary Beth.